welcome to jasonchats.com So today I have You know, I was having an okay day Generally, generally um, Woke up I spent a couple of hours working on my websites and podcasts and all that stuff and I was in quite a good mood I had a donation from uh, Andrew so thank you Andrew and and that was via PayPal so I put um donation boxes, buttons or icons or whatever you want to call them on, on all the different websites that I've got and just trying to you know any any for little any little helps in order to pay towards the cost of running this stuff that I do. Anyway I uh, so thank you Andrew I appreciate that. And I had to call up PayPal because I wasn't able to log in because they had my old telephone number and I just uh, so I had to phone them up and answer some random questions it was quite weird but before that I'd been to bed for a couple of hours and yeah it's, it's an okay day uh, I had I had hot cross buns and I was feeling quite good. Andre was making some weird like crying noises in his sleep so I got him up and gave him a cuddle and decided to take him out for a walk. This was about four o'clock, something like that. And Everything went a bit weird after that. I kind of my mood changed, and so I went for a walk, came back, and it was starting to get a little bit dark inside. So I turned the light on in the living room, and the light bulb just blew up. Well, you know, st st stopped working, and um, it turned out it was. Uh, tripped the switch so I had to go and into the cupboard and you know, put it back on all the lights were out but I didn't realize because it was I didn't have lights on anywhere else in the flat but it put me in a really bad mood really really quickly which I'm still a bit surprised about it's a bit embarrassing really but uh, I, you could say I lost my shit. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I really lost lost my temper, and I didn't have any spare light bulbs. Uh, I, I I've actually ordered some now, so I'm going to be getting some new light bulbs. Uh, so future in the future, this won't happen. But really, really wound me up the idea of being stuck in here without any lights means I can't do anything uh, so just and I basically had a tantrum and I punched the door if you can see um, see that is not really anything but I've if you look at the difference well I don't know if you can see it I can't bend it uh, I think I've broken the knuckle, that knuckle. It's really, it's, I probably can't even see it, it's really not that obvious, but it's quite swollen. It probably looks the same as the other hand, but it's swollen all the way down there. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't even know I was gonna do it. That's what's weird about it. I just, lashed out and I punched the wall 
I punched the door rather than up the wall. I think if I'd have punched the wall, my hand would be broken. Properly. It may well be broken and I'm possibly going to have to go to the doctors, to the uh, hospital tomorrow maybe. I can't bend it, that's as far as I can bend it. So I kind of, I can't, it hurts doing that, but I can't, I can't make a fist at all. And, and I can't straighten it either. Um, but do those fingers, but, and I can do that one, but, oh. <sighs> Just about, but it's not so much the finger rather than the, I can't move it on its own because it uses that. I can move it like that, but I can't physically move it with my hand, if that makes sense. So I put some frozen beans, I had some frozen beans, um, a pack of frozen peas rather, and I put wrapped that around it for a while. But yeah, it's uh, it's weird because I still feel crappy. My mood just really took a, a swing downwards turn um, and I don't really know why and that's maybe that's what annoys me more I, I'm not sure but the fact that how can a light bulb going out be a trigger <laughs> who would have thought a light bulb would be a trigger we could call it the light bulb moment a light bulb moment. But instead of coming up with an idea, really clever, I, I do something really stupid like punch something, an inanimate hard object, which damages my hand. And it's not the first time I thought it was the last. I didn't think I was going to do it anymore. I, I broke my hand in 94. Um, see that that knuckle there I don't have a knuckle anymore so uh, see that knuckle that that one that one there isn't I know you can't really see it because of the the uh, skin damage that I had from punch but I've got no got no knuckle there basically I crushed the knuckle in I think I've done the same with that one so it's a lot, I don't know if you can see, it's just, it's a, that knuckle there is a lot bigger than, well actually maybe it's not that much bigger, but it looks bigger because the others are, but anyway, that's boring, but it feels the way and it looks the same as it did when I broke it that time, uh, just swollen and I'd already taken cocodamol before I did it, and I've taken cocodamol since. So I guess that's sort of keeping the pain lower, and also it's it's not a big knuckle that's been damaged. It's the small one, so maybe it's not hurting as much. But I can't I can't move the thing. So anyway, I. I haven't done this for a long time. I can't remember the last time I did it, but I used to punch walls uh, a lot, right from an early age. It was I didn't realise it was kind of a, uh, a form of self harm. I didn't I didn't realise that at the time. I didn't realise that until. I'd studied counselling and you know studied that side of things realized that actually I did always feel better there was the release of anger and frustration but there was also the the focus of attention went from my emotional uh, anguish or 
whatever you want to call it, you know, the emotional pain to the physical pain of the hand. And it used to be both hands. I didn't used to be too fussy. I'd punch with both left and right. And I, you know, that that's nothing compared to what I used to have. I used to completely smash my knuckles in, so they were just just scabs the whole time. And it's quite weird that no one really noticed, but. It felt like a release, it was quite nice. Just in the same way that when I broke my hand, I remember it was, although it was painful, I kind of was in a good mood after I'd done it. Uh, when I fell out of the bath and broke my wrist, my left wrist, or fractured, it was a fracture, fractured my left wrist. Although it was kind of scary at the at the time because I landed out of the bath while I was having a shower, I landed out of the bath. I was it wasn't just my wrist I hurt, I hurt my back, my hip, my leg, and I wasn't really sure. I was very disorientated and because I'd landed on my left side, which is the why I landed on my wrist, I couldn't get up because there was no it was too painful to put any pressure on to actually get out to get up and the floor was all covered in water, I was naked. Um, yeah, it was like a little dolphin in a sink, I must have looked like, but covered in grease. But yeah, anyway, I I noticed when I broke my wrist that I was in the hospital waiting to be seen, x-ray and all that stuff, and I was in a good mood. What's weird about this is I'm not in a good mood. I don't, not that I should be in a good mood for having an injury, physical injury. I'm, I am pissed off because it's self-inflicted. Like when I fell out of a shower, it was an accident, and I felt relieved that I didn't uh, hurt myself worse, like bash my head or something like that. Andre, do you want to come and say hello? Andre, come on. No, he doesn't. He's lying flat on the on the floor. Um. So yeah, it's it's a bit weird. I just it hurts. It just it hurts, but it's just throbbing. But I don't really care. It's weird, but I just, I'm just a bit concerned that I'm not feeling good. Although I don't want to connect hurting myself with feeling good, because that's a, a self-harming frame of mind, and I don't want to go back to that. Uh, I remember I used to have the scabs, and I used to use a compass, you know, oh, God, you know, the, the um, the metal compasses you use at school for arithmetic. I used to remember used to punch it into my skin and dig it in and like cause pain, but I didn't know why I was doing it. I didn't know that it was um, releasing, or I thought it was releasing emotional distress. I didn't didn't know at the time. I genuinely didn't. But I do remember the very first time. I punched a wall and it was an accident. I actually went to punch someone's face because they were annoying me and I was probably about nine, maybe ten, probably nine, about nine-ish, nine, about nine, yeah, about nine. And it was coming, we were in playtime, so we break at school and someone I was winding me up, it was just annoying me or something. So I went to punch him and the, the bell went for us to go back to class. And I went as I went to punch him, he just turned and ran and completely forgot about the argument and, and ran away back to the class. And I, I hit the corner of the um, the wall, not just the flat, but the corner, completely smashed my hand up 
I think it was my le either left or right, I don't know. But these scabs, nothing, it was like completely blood all the way, just completely really ruined my hand. So I was sitting there in the class, I remember it. I was sitting there in the classroom. My hand was throbbing. There was, it was just seeping and, you know, but it gave me something to focus on. And that classroom set, that, that lesson was just a lot easier to deal with. Didn't feel as stressed. I used to get really stressed when I was a kid. I used to let it build up and then just start burst out crying uncontrollably and not know why. I'm not tall, I don't, I wasn't walking around crying all the time, I just, it built up every now and then. It still happens, if I'm honest. It doesn't happen as much as it used to. Uh, I mean, the last time I cried was, actually, you know, that's a lie, it's a lie. I was gonna say it was at my nan's funeral. That wasn't the last time I cried, I cried. Um, someone was rude to me and a friend was rude to me and I, I came up I was in here in this flat and I just couldn't stop crying so that's that's a bit of a it was like an overreaction but it wasn't really about that I think it's just maybe it's like being constipated being constipated and then taking some laxatives or something, I don't know, and suddenly you just can't stop it, the flow. It's like a waterfall of... I don't know, Ovaltina or... Bovril, depends, I suppose. Just, you know, over... Poo, basically. So... Just thinking back to those times, and since then, since that time, the very first time I punched the wall by accident, I then started punching the wall on purpose because then I didn't have to hurt another person and it got it out of my system. And it was also, I think, part that I wanted to show people that I could do it as well. Maybe I, I think maybe I like wanted to test myself and say, look, um, I can do this to a brick wall. Imagine what I could do to your face. Kind of, you know, like your your little soft face. I could, maybe I didn't think that way at the time, but I was only a kid and, I had a lot of anger, um, but repressed, really. Well, I'd, I got into fights and stuff, but I was more, I've never really been that way inclined. It's always quite repressed it. But it's just weird. I'm just surprised because, you know, I've, um, <laughs> it's, I had some weird times, even as an adult, that I've done it. And back in 2000 and six I think it was I went to work do and it was a big uh, like ball gala ball thing you know it's a big event so I went there we went in a coach and there was people from all different branches there and I was in a tuxedo and you know it's really dressed up rented of course and uh, I was very 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 drunk very very drunk and I came back, got off the coach, and I'm walking towards where I live. I managed to get off and walk around like got a shortcut. And I tripped over, I was very drunk, and I started punching the pavement. And I don't know how long I was doing it for, but the next day I woke up and my hand, I think I only punched one and my hand was just completely just one big 
open wound <laughs> and I had a sore hand as well. It's like, why? It's such a stu just a stupid thing to do. I think it's a silly thing for me to be doing. And I didn't even know I was going to do it today. I didn't. I've not punched a wall or anything like that for a long time, years, I think, I think. I've maybe not, but it's, it seems a long, like a long time since it happened. And I definitely haven't done it regularly for a long time. Mind you, before I moved here, I did have a punch bag. So yeah, I've kind of had punch bags and stuff for most of the last 10 years until I moved there. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I need to do, get myself a punch bag. So it wasn't that I wasn't punching things, I just, and I was doing boxing for a while as well. So it wasn't that I wasn't punching things, I just I wasn't punching walls and I wasn't injuring myself. Um, it's weird, but even, I remember in the past I've gone to gyms and when I was younger and I wouldn't wear gloves, I just punched a punch bag just with my hands as they were. And I get to the point where, and also with punch bags that I had myself, where I couldn't control it. And I kept punching, and I kept punching, and I kept punching. And my hands would be bleeding, there'd be blood all over the punch bag. And I just kept, couldn't, it's like I couldn't stop. It's really strange. And I worry now, as I'm getting older, like having uh, arthritis and problems with my hands because I do feel it when I wake up in the morning, my hands are stiff, my fingers are stiff when I wake up in the mornings. The rest of my body, well actually, it's not the only part that's stiff, no, it's, uh, but my fingers are stiff, the joints, they're okay after I've been up for a while. Um, it's kind of self-inflicted, it seems so silly, because I wouldn't knee a wall because I know that it would damage my knees and I'd end up with real problems. I wouldn't perhaps even be able to walk eventually if I kept kneeing walls, you know, bashing my knee against the wall, like in a like kickboxing sort of thing. So I wouldn't do that. So why would I punch something? And let's face it, it was a bit of a crap punch because you're not supposed to punch with that part of your hand. I realised I didn't just part, I mean, I also punched with that part as well, but it's supposed to be that part, <laughs> and I just, either, and I didn't even make a dent in the door, as far as I can see, so either the door's really, really hard, or I've got a really, really weak hand, and it could be, a, I might have a weak hand, who knows? And the bones get softer, don't they? More brittle as you get older. So I don't know. It's all, all I know is it's just a ridiculous thing to do. I don't want to beat myself up about it, you know. Yeah, besides, I only beat up doors. So I don't beat up myself. But I don't want to. I don't want to put, give myself too much of a hard time. But I want to acknowledge that it's a really, really. Um, It's not a good thing to be doing. That's kind of all I want to say. It's, it's not. It's not useful. It's. I'm now struggling to type. Not that I type much, you know, like. Blah, 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 but I don't do the tongue action when I type. Um, depends what else I'm doing. But yeah, basically, I like, you know. I like to be able to move my hands around, but as it is, I'm kind of I can't move that part of my hand. So every time I try and do something on the computer, it's sort of it's more it's stuck rather than it's hurting. If that makes sense, it's I can't move it. Look, that's as far as I can move. I can't I can't move that part of the hand. Um, that's as far as I can move it that way, and I can't move it. Any, see, I can't, I can't 
can't straighten my fingers out like that, or that's as far as it goes. So, I don't really want to go to the hospital because I've already been there twice this week. I went there with a friend twice and waited in the A&E for about three hours, action emergency for three hours, and I don't like the idea of doing that again. Um, but what's the worst case scenario though really? What can I really do? Is it, if it, you know, it's, it's a hand. It just has to heal, doesn't it? Uh, but I suppose it's probably good to check it out and make sure that I don't know, they wouldn't have to straighten out a finger, would they? Would they? I don't know. I suppose if it's see if it was dislocated then it would be absolute dislocations are agony aren't they I've, I've never had a dislocation in that I know of but I I it would need to be taken out in order for me to be able to just talk normally I wouldn't be able to just talk like this if it was dislocated I guess uh, I've seen people with dislocated shoulders and elbows and stuff and it's it, it looks really, really bad, much worse than a, a break, as far as pain goes. But then actually, I've never broken my elbow or my shoulder, but I've broken a few bits. I had a cracked rib, broke my hand, my wrist. What else have I broken? I can't remember, a few little bits of bobs. Nothing major. I think uh, cracked rib was the worst. I did that when I was doing Wing Chun Kung Fu. Someone elbowed me right in the middle of my chest and it got one of the ribs right, one of the top ribs. So every time I breathed, it was agony. And it took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to heal. Really, really, that was way more painful than any other break I've had. Any other breakage? Anyway, um, so this is only going to be like a two minute video, but again, I'm chatting forever. I feel a little bit better actually having had an opportunity to just talk, I guess. that's I suppose that's what these are about. It's an uh, opportunity for me to just talk about how I'm feeling and that is how I'm feeling, to be fair. I'm a bit, a bit disappointed in myself because for, you know, a, a tantrum and a minicule of a second it took for me just to punch the door to cause myself pain, which is perhaps gonna last for uh, a few weeks just seems ridiculous and I'm a bit worried that I'm I'm worried that I'm regressing you know I don't want to go backwards not with this stuff I don't want to go back to that because uh, there was times when I was quite angry you know I used to get really really angry over little things and a light bulb, it can't be much less, much smaller than that, you know. I didn't punch at walls when I found out my nan was ill or when she broke her hip or when she died or when I lost my job or when the girlfriends have split up with me. Um, various different things have happened. I didn't punch the walls then, so why am I punching the wall over a light bulb going out? It's very strange. I don't, I don't quite get it. It's it's kind of it's funny on one level, but it's ridiculous. Um, but one good thing, and those of you that know my past history of. Uh, losing it and maybe destroying my online work 
I was laying in bed, or laying on my bed just now, because again, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't really f focus, and I needed to just, just didn't feel very good, like emotionally. And it came into my mind, I'll just get rid of the blogs and the, and the podcasts and the website and all that stuff. But part of the reason I'm thinking that is because there's so much work involved in all this. It's taken up a lot of my time, which is fine. Time is something that I guess I do have uh, available, but it's really, some of it's quite complicated to keep track of all the different things I'm doing. Because I've got quite a few more websites now than I used to have and uh, it's about trying to get organised and so that's what I need to do. But I've kind of had enough of it for a while because I've really been working on it quite hard and there's that little self-sabotage voice comes into my head that says, oh, give it all up. It's kind of weird, it's like being in a lifeboat, you know, and thinking, in a sense, being in a lifeboat, full of food, full of water, enough to last me for a long time, and me thinking, ah, oh, no one's going to come and rescue me, so I might as well drill a hole in the bottom of the boat and sink it. It kind of seems to be, that seems to be my thinking instead of, let's just see how it goes. You know, I've got plenty of food, plenty of water. I might feel different tomorrow. I probably will feel different tomorrow because we feel different, don't we? Uh, it's just natural to feel different. Lee. There's something about being stuck in that that mindset and to be able to step out and observe it and think well I'm not gonna act at the moment it's better to just put the lid of the laptop down and just walk away which is what I should have done when back in three years ago or something I destroyed pretty much all my books all my hypnosis books all the ones behind me I've replaced um, and it was kind of I was stuck in this groove of just doing it and if only I could have just step back and maybe booked or visited family or gone and booked a hotel room in a you know cheap hotel room somewhere and stayed there for the night just to get myself out of that situation so that I could look with fresh eyes instead of destroying 20 years worth of a book collection thousands of pounds worth of books and destroyed them, ripped them up spent hours and hours and hours and hours doing it my hands were cut to bits and I couldn't stop or at least I didn't feel that I was able to stop the thing is it, I was loving it I was on some kind of manic thing as well so it was, it was depression and mania all at the same time it seemed to be I had the energy to destroy instead of just the will I had this huge amount of energy behind it it was yeah like a very powerful fart you know Always come back to farting for some reason. Anyway, I'm going to go because this video is too long already. That's it.
you take care and I'll see you next time. This is jasonchats.com. Check out my other websites, <laughs> my therapeutic websites. God, I do struggle with this, you know, because we're not all just one thing. We're not all just, um, what I mean by that is, I, do, I make hypnosis videos and I try and, and MP3s and I try and help people with the various things I do, including um, I don't know, sort of saying nice things to people on the audios and trying to not necessarily motivate but be kind to people on there. And then I make a video like this where I'm talking about I suppose self-harm in a way and losing losing my uh, cool and collected mindset for a short period and it just seems I don't know for me it's normal because that's how I've lived my life and I'm I'm used to this you know I'm diagnosed with bipolar slash emotionally emotional personality disorder or whatever but I'm also you know a hypnotist I'm also uh, it's because of having these issues maybe in the past in my life now in my mind whatever that drive me to want to help other people not in person but online because then by doing it online I can make those audios those videos when I'm in a, a good state when I'm in a good state of mind when I'm feeling optimistic positive maybe calm relaxed I wouldn't be able to do that if I was seeing clients all day every day because well I probably could do it but I'd have to leave my self outside the door and Andre stop doing that I have to leave my that part of me outside the therapy room which is a good thing not to bring it in the therapy room maybe but then I'm leaving part of who I am the, a real person the genuineness of the relationship won't really be there if I'm pretending to be something I'm not or you know but anyway so that's why I'm doing it online it's not just about reaching a larger audience which you know I prefer because you know I see one person and maybe the most amount of people I probably see in a week is maybe 25 if I see five people a week a day it's quite a lot of people, quite a lot of uh, therapy sessions. But doing this, I'm reaching thousands of people a week. And that, that number's growing all the time. So it's, yeah. I just, it suits me. It doesn't suit everyone, but it suits me. If it wasn't for the internet, I don't know where I'd be actually because it's given me an opportunity to do these things that I wouldn't have felt confident enough possibly to have done in person um, not that I would be doing something like this in person because that would be weird basically it'd be, I'd be the, the client and I'd be talking to a counsellor probably wouldn't I you're like my counsellor you're my therapist So, yeah, that's it really. I haven't really got much else to say other than my podcasts have been accepted on, I think it's iHeartRadio. And so it's I think a podcast, an app on uh, Android and iPhone app. So I'm 
potentially going to be reaching a much larger, larger audience. I've got one podcast on Spotify, but I'm still waiting to hear about the others. And uh, yeah, I'm also getting a lot more of my videos being watched as well because of the new video websites I've got for the relaxation, chronic pain and in sleep hypnosis sessions. So yeah, I've also added in those pages uh, so you can also listen to the audio or download the, download the mp3s on those as well. So it's all coming together, it's just It is what it is. It's Friday tomorrow and I'm just going to relax for the weekend. I might end up having to go, well, I might end up going to the hospital and I don't have to do anything. But if it's if it's still like this and I'm not able to move it, I guess it makes sense to go to the hospital and just, if they have to tape it up or something, then I guess that's what I need to do because if I just let it set like that then I might not be able to use it it might cause damage or whatever to to my bones so I guess I'm gonna have to just face that and go in I just can't be bothered really can't really really can't so after yesterday as well if you watch yesterday's chase and chat so I, I talk about what happened yesterday but I was just so wound up by the whole thing been getting wound up it's terrible isn't it and there's all these people that are out there really really struggling and having really difficult lives and here's me they're doing, maybe doing jobs they hate or really difficult jobs that are you know physically and emotionally demanding and currently in my position I don't have any of that and I know comparisons aren't useful when it comes to emotional issues but I do wonder what I'd be like if or when I end up working again because my stress my ability to deal with stress is I can deal with stress, but I have a less of a tolerance to it than I used to uh, due to my mental health issues, my brain basically. But I do know how to relax, uh, I do know how to teach people to relax. Don't know why I'm saying that really, but yeah, I do. I just, I don't know, maybe I feel like a fraud, a bit of a fraud sometimes. But I do worry, I worry about, I think, well maybe, surely what I should be doing is trying to earn a living out of this, the online stuff. This is what I love doing, this is what I've been focusing on for the last 12 years, this is what you know, this is my life, this is what I've devoted my life to doing and intend to do this for the rest of my life. So I need to figure a way of keeping it free, it's a free service, so keeping it free, yet at the same time having some kind of a stream of an income. So that's why I put the donation boxes up. The donation's not really as an income for me, it's just to try and cover the costs which keep going up for, you know, even the internet costs me £40 a month. Uh, the podcasts, the websites, you know, it's probably, I worked it out, probably a couple of thousand pounds a year, if not more, for all the different things that I pay out for to do with the internet, to do with you know, what I do online. And last year even more when you think oh I, dog, I did get help to buy the camera but I bought a camera I had to buy a new lap well a second hand laptop after Christmas because the other laptop broke 
Uh, I've been paying for this phone because I didn't have a camera, so I'm paying off for an iPhone. So it's, you know, all that's up. Oh yes. Um, anyway, that's it for me. You take care. I hope it's loud enough. I'm doing this. This is a, it's a microphone there, so I'm trying to speak quite cl quite um, softly because it's it's about half eleven, maybe quarter to twelve, and I don't want to be noisy at this time of night. So uh, I hope it's not too soft, too quiet. Anyway, take care, yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself and have a good weekend. I'll be here tomorrow probably talking about a bunch of crap like normal, but just have a good day tomorrow. Be safe and, you know, whatever. I can't, th I want to think of something like really snappy and groovy to say, but I can't. I'm tired. I don't know if I'm tired physically or emotionally. Probably a bit of both. Anyway, you take care of yourselves. I've said that about a hundred times already. I'll see you next time. My name's Jason Newland. This is jasonchats.com. Also, my main website is jasonnewland.com and if you go there, everything else is, you can get all the links to everything else that I've got, all the podcasts and stuff like that. Also on iTunes and you name it, I'm on it. I've also got a Facebook page and a Twitter and Google+. Does anybody use Google+. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. Does anybody? Anyway. You take care and I'll speak to you. Also, my Vimeo website is also website is also up um, there as well. It's about 800 videos. Uh, so you just go on Vimeo and just put my name in. You'll find my stuff. All right, take care. I'm going to go. I'm really going to go now. Bye.